On the consent calendar, all items are considered routine or implemented earlier council action and may be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless requested by a council member, citizen, or staff. We have a request from a member of the public to remove items 7D, 7E, and 7F. And staff has the questions presented regarding these items. And I will let staff respond in a few moments. Uh, any action on the remainder of the consent calendar? If there be nothing else, I'll uh, move to approve items A <coughs> through C. Second. A motion is second on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, item 7D, report on emergency preparedness activities. The uh, constituent says, I request a short report uh, to the residents on how the city has updated the city's emergency pre preparedness activities. This report should be shared with the community in an open session, not buried as a consent item. So we have a report on that. <laughs> uh, honorable mayor members of the city council my name is dave cresta battalion chief uh, with the san Bernardino fire department and i appreciate the opportunity to give you an update on the status of our emerging preparedness program as you know the uh, position was filled in may and the idea was to use the position to coordinate all emergency preparedness with all the departments in the city as well as the county oes and uh, emergency managers association it was important to learn from challenges faced by the glenview fire to um, to be prepared for any future disasters and the goal is to improve in all phases of emergency preparedness including preparedness planning mitigation response and recovery uh, since obviously training plays a critical role in preparedness uh, that's been our primary focus so far uh, in the month of May, we trained approximately 40 staff members who would fill a role in the EOC in Web EOC. Web EOC is a computer-based resource tracking system that has been adopted by the State Emergency, of Office, uh, uh, Emergency Services and will be used in future disasters. Uh, during a disaster, public employees are required to serve as disaster service workers. And so uh, during June and July, we provided that state-required training to, um, to 132 full-time employees. Um, that training consists of ICS 100 and 700. And also in coordination with human resources, we have uh, developed a program where all uh, new employees will get that, that training as part of their orientation. Um, we've started a series of workshops and exercises that, that have started and will go through the year. On October 2nd, designated EEOC staff attended a workshop and table tap exercise on multi-agency coordination. Uh, the San Mateo Office of Emergency Services will be conducting a series of four multi-agency exercises throughout the county. These exercises are designed to prompt a region-wide response that will require multiple EOCs to be open during each exercise in an effort to coordinate using unified command and, and that multi-agency coordination concept. On December 3rd, our EOC will be open as part of the Central County uh, drill. It will be a functional exercise to test the uh, cohesive capability of the operational area. As a run-up to that training, um, in December, we'll probably in the middle of November, we'll do some section-specific training for each, uh, each part of the EOC management operations planning, logistics, and finance uh, to get them prepared for that. Um, additionally, CERT, we completed a CERT class, which was about 30 residents, primarily from Shelter Creek. We completed that in June, and we're in the process of scheduling an additional CERT class, probably, depending on the holidays, we'll start either toward the end of the year or beginning of next year. We have about 30, 30 residents that are interested in that, and we're just trying to figure out a time and a schedule that works for everybody. And just to finish up, um, additionally after that, the focus will shift to our emergency operations plan, which will be due to be revised. Um, and that document is based on the county emergency operations plan, which was just, should be complete by the end of the year, and ours will be based, up, based on that. Uh, that's all I have. If there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Thank you very much for the explanation. Through the and chair, Michael. Uh, I have a few questions on this, and uh, it, it's actually uh, interesting that it came up because I, I had it on my mind to bring this up. Um, there was an article uh, that was published recently in the um, uh, what 
is this, the uh, Western City magazine that we get uh, periodically. And um, it, it actually talked about having disaster plans and uh, making sure that uh, the city council is involved in this. So one of the questions I had is, at any point, um, is there a plan to include us in some sort of training? Uh, I know that when, uh, during the Glenview fire, we, none of us here were really uh, prepared and had no idea what we were supposed to be doing as part of that response. And um, I, mean, I had been on the council a fairly short time, and uh, I know I didn't really know what to do, and I know we were all kind of uh, guessing, trying to figure it out as we went along. So if at some point uh, we could be included in some of that training just so that we know what our role is supposed to be, what's expected of us during those situations, I think that would be very useful. Um, I had also asked um, shortly after the, uh, the explosion and fire uh, about uh, doing some sort of uh, lessons learned, um, interviewing the people that were involved, uh, everybody that was in the EOC, trying to collect as much data as we could while it was still fresh in everyone's mind in terms of what worked well and what didn't work well, where we needed improvement, where communication broke down. Um, I know it's a lot of time has passed, but I'm wondering if, uh, if any of that was done in, in, as part of uh, preparing our, our current emergency plan? Yes. First off, your first question, there is no required training for uh, city officials. However, there is training. There's specific ICS class for executives like yourself. And um, some, some there's a, there's a, a general idea that, that probably should have ICS 100 and 700. And we can, a couple of ways we can provide that to you. It is on a FEMA website. We can give that information and you could, you could take an online class and take a test to get certified, or we can certainly arrange uh, an instructor for that, and we can look into that further. Uh, your second question, after any disaster, Glenview included, there's after action reports, and part of my job was to review those reports. I also have interviewed uh, just about everybody that played a critical role in the EOC. I reviewed uh, several documents that were prepared both by OES and the city and have kind of made a list of those things, uh, of, of things that need to be improved, and that's going to be addressed in much of this off um, updated training. Okay. And as far as the revised plan, you, you mentioned that you're still working on a revised plan. When, when is that expected to be completed? So the county should finish theirs by the end of the year, and ours, it needs to be um, vetted by the state. Once it's done, <coughs> it'll, it'll come down, and our plan will be based upon that plan. So um, until... Basically, there's working groups within the Emergency Managers Association. We're beginning that process now, but until that final product comes out from county, we really can't take those last few steps. And just to get an idea, how, how old is our current plan? Our current plan is current. It just it need, it needs to be revised every three years, and now we're up to that. So I, I think it was revised 2011 or so. Okay. All right. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Through the chair, uh, really quick to Councilmember Salazar, there is uh, training for electeds. So I've taken two classes. Um, usually you'll have uh, electeds. One was uh, in the city of Millbrae, which a couple attended, and one in the uh, city of San Mateo. The class is long because you have nothing but a bunch of electeds, so we tend to talk and ask a lot of questions. So uh, aside from that, it's, it's beneficial. There are um, classes, and with the OES, they can offer that. Usually would be after the holidays. And those are ones you can go in person. As the chief said, there are stuff uh, as, as well as online. The one in the city of Millbrae was more of uh, exercise in, in preparation for the unknown and uncertain. Um, as we know, uh, back in 2010, that was not only uh, unexpected, but it was something that nobody could have planned for, could have had an exercise or drill for. So uh, once again, um, thinking back to that night uh, on the hill with the mayor, um, I think the staff and the council and the citizen reacted uh, exemplary. So uh, we have a lot to learn and a lot to improve upon, and that's why I'm very happy about the, the position that I thought was uh, important to go forward, that you stand there before us today, and we plan for the unexpected, because it can happen and it will happen again. So thank you. Okay. Anything else? Action on item 7D. Move to approve. Second. Motion second on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next uh, item that the resident wanted uh, some talk about is adopt a resolution, 7E, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager and the city attorney to execute escrow documents to complete the purchase of 324 Florida Avenue by the city of San Bruno and appropriating $604,000 from the park in lieu fund and up to $10,000 from the general fund. Uh, 
he requests that since this item was discussed in closed session, uh, I and the residents deserve to know in open session a little background and justification for this action. Did the resident ask the city to purchase their property, or did the city go to the resident and make the statement along with along the lines of, we do not approve of how you're keeping up your personal residence, so we will be purchasing your resident residence. Is the city now planning to take personal pro residential property if it does not like the way the resident is keeping it up? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the um, answer to the last question first, and then I'll give you a little bit of background uh, because I think the last question is particularly important. As the city council knows, this city has a broad-based policy that is insinuated into our transit corridor plan and I believe into our general plan as well, that the city does not, uh, it was certainly in our redevelopment plan, that the city does not um, intend, has never, and um, as I said, does not intend to use eminent domain to take residential property under any circumstances. And that was certainly not the case in this situation. Um, in fact, the, although this property has been in a um, declining and deteriorated state for many years now, um, it has some historic significance, and it was the interest of the property owner um, who actually approached us. Um, we had some previous conversations at our planning counter with um, individuals who had an interest in the development potential of the property and had made inquiries of our staff and it was um, in, in, in that line of discussion that um, we became aware that the property was in, in play, so to speak. Um, the owner is an elderly woman whose uh, grandparents originally purchased the property and used it in part as a, um, it was a family home and was uh, used in part by her grandfather as a wood shop, he was a master woodworker from Switzerland. Is that correct? Um, and actually, um, the purchase of the property comes along with a very exquisite um, piece of uh, very large piece of carving um, that this gentleman produced many years ago. Um, as I indicated, the property is in a deteriorated state of repair and the owner is no longer able to maintain it and for many years has, has uh, not resided at the property. Um, the city's interest uh, uh, upon uh, uh, our, our being approached and understanding that the property um, uh, might, might be um, available for sale the property owner expressed an interest that um, it would please them to have, know that the property was being used for public purposes, um, for others potentially to enjoy as her family had enjoyed it for many, many years. Um, this is an area of our city that does not have um, a great deal of open space. It is actually a fairly compact and heavily populated area of the city. And it was with those considerations that the City Council initiated um, discussion about possible purchase of the property with the potential intent of using the property for park or open space purposes, although there has been no um, conclusion or decision reached about um, how or when or for what um, the property might be improved. In the near term, um, uh, it is the intent to, uh, following acquisition of the property, to move to demolition of the property, and there is some remediation um, in the soils that needs to be accomplished in order for the area to be um, turned into um, something that could be used by the public eventually. So those are both the anticipated near term and next steps related to the property. All right, thank you. Council is well aware of what, what we uh, did. Any additional questions or action on item 7E? Uh, Mr. Mayor, sorry, before yes. you do move, um, I noticed there's a typo in the resolution. I apologize. The amount from the Park and Lou Fund is stated throughout both the staff report and the um, third paragraph of the resolution is uh, $604,000. I see that 
Later in the resolution, it says 640,000. That should be 604 okay. at the end. So I apologize for, for that, but I'm, I'm glad we caught it. All right. Can we just uh, uh, pass this? We don't have to introduce the resolution. Um, there is a resolution for, for But adoption. it was under consent, so uh, we can just pass it. You can make a motion okay. Uh, okay. adopting it. That's right. Okay. Is there a motion to? Uh, yeah, you got one minute. Yes. Good evening. Uh, this is great news for my neighborhood, Marty Medina, Garden Avenue. I walk by the uh, vacant property every day, uh, Monday through Friday, to pick up my son to at daycare. And um, it's great knowing that it's also a Switzerland uh, connection because my son is a quarter Swiss. And um, I just wanted to commend you for, for getting that property. It's been an eyesore, a nuisance. I heard the rumor, we've talked to the daycare people and, and it'd be a great place for a park and we, I really urge that we could immediately turn that into a park and be willing to help out and uh, get some volunteers to go over there and put some place, place structure equipment because that property definitely is a prime location for a park. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay, any action on item 7E? Move to accept. Second. Motion to second on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. You're opposed. Okay. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, through the chair. Did you say? I said no. Okay. Are you That's opposed? Yes. Three to two. Three to two. Three to two. Um, Mr. Medina, Mr. Salazar, no. Thank you. Okay. And through the uh, chair. Yes. Um, just wanted to uh, briefly explain. Um, I have, since we, this has been under discussion, my heart would say yes, but my the looking for the city's assets and, and the future is where I have my, uh, my concern. Um, I do think that the building needs to come down. I've been walking it and driving it constantly, me meeting the neighbors in the area, trying to assess um, what their needs are, and it is an eyesore. And yes, uh, since it will be purchased, it does need to come down. The city needs to lead by example. Um, I know we have parks in, throughout this community. We just had an interview from somebody who thinks our fields are not in the best of condition. Um, I know we just hired a parks maintenance person because we're trying to maintain what we have. So I believe we always need to take care of first and foremost what we have and invest in, uh, this is a great opportunity, so this is why I'm, I was a little torn. Um, but I do know that it, was, it had been on the market back in 2012 for about 599000 I found that out. Um, wasn't able to be sold. And um, though, like I said, uh, I, I am only concerned because of the fact that my vote was the way uh, when we purchased the Wells Fargo lot before I was on the council, that sat for quite a bit of time as a fence and weeds, and then it became obviously what it is today, which still some people feel it isn't, doesn't meet its full expectation. So um, that was the reason for my no vote, though, um, as I made clear to my colleagues, uh, with it being purchased, I do want to see it torn down, and I want to see it leveled and clean for the neighborhood. Thank you. You have the vote, Carol? Okay. Item 7F, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager and the city attorney to execute a purchase and sale agreement and associated escrow documents for the sale of 981 Glenview Drive, uh, 1110 Glenview Drive, and 1641 Claremont Drive by the City of San Bruno to Castle Companies, Inc. I request a short report on this proposed action and the dollar amounts that should be received by the city. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, this item has been discussed on at least two previous occasions in open session of, this, of the City Council at regularly scheduled meetings um, and is a result of an RFP that was issued by the City um, in 2013, uh, at which time the City requested proposals from qualified developers to construct houses on 10 vacant lots in the Crestmore uh, neighborhood that was damaged by fire in 2010. Three of those lots are currently owned by the city. Uh, they came into city ownership by settlement with uh, PG&E um, as part of our um, restitution uh, award or settlement of our uh, negotiations with PG&E for restitution. Um, seven of the lots, uh, seven of the ten are owned by PG&E and they were acquired as part of PG&E's 
um, program to assist residents in the neighborhood who determined that um, uh, following destruction of their houses, they did not wish to return and rebuild. So for a total of 10 lots, uh, the city sought qualified developers who would build, uh, who, who had the financial wherewithal and um, uh, track record and design sensibility that would provide for compatible housing to be built to finish out the uh, restoration of the neighborhood. Um, Castle Companies was a successful proposer. Uh, the the uh, selection process uh, was completed by the city council a number of months ago, and we have reached the point in this process where we need to enter into an actual purchase and sale agreement um, that will conclude that the uh, will be a, will be the um, completion of the uh, transfer of of the um, uh, real estate in order that council can move forward with plans for and design and uh, development scheduling for the construction of the houses. Um, as part of the, the uh, RFP process, the city asked qualified developers to provide the purchase price at which they would be willing to purchase the lots. Castle, um, and, and I'm sorry that I'm not remembering if they were the highest proposing uh, developer or at least um, uh, the second highest. Um, their purchase price offered was $415,000 per lot. And again, um, three of those lots are owned by, this, three of the 10 lots are owned by the city. So the city will receive um, as purchase price um, $415,000 per lot for a total of $1,245,000. Um, those funds will be transferred to the restitution fund um, and will will um, come five thousand dollars shy of the seventy million dollar total value of that fund, um, as it was uh, negotiated with PG&E. And the next steps in this process involve the um, actual execution of the purchase and sale agreement. Um, the Uh, the um, final completion of a development agreement that would be presented and approved by the city council. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, design and construction plan development by Castle Company. We still hope that um, construction of the properties, it can begin sometime during the year 2015. Um, we had originally hoped that development could begin as early as the spring. It appears uh, now, given the schedule um, and, and where we are, that that is, is not possible. But we do anticipate having homes ready to be occupied in 2016 and are very much looking forward to that to coincide or come very shortly after the public infrastructure work is completed um, in that neighborhood and we can finally see complete closure to restoration of that neighborhood. Good. Thank you. I think it should be mentioned, <clears throat> just as an aside, that uh, the city did not drag its feet on this. pg e took an extra six months or more to sign the agreement, so we've been waiting for that and I believe it's, uh, it's here coming momentarily, so. That's correct. Uh, any action on item? Move to approve. Through Seven the chair, eight. if oh, I could sorry. make Michael, a comment Michael, before Michael, we apologize. vote on that. Michael, I Michael. did have a comment. Uh, ahead, no problem, sorry. Um, the, the only comment I had on this, and, and I know that there was a lot of frustration up in the neighborhood about this taking as long as it did, and I have a letter here that we got on September 22nd uh, to that fact. And um, I just did want to comment that um, in the staff report, I mean, the first date listed here is March 12th, 2012. So two and a half years later, uh, and I know that there's a number of reasons why this was delayed, but um, I mean, th this really did take way too long. Um, I, I didn't mention anything on, on the park issue, but one of my concerns is that the city has demonstrated that it takes us a very long time to get things done. I think this exemplifies it. Um, you know, by taking on this park project, I mean, we're expending uh, pretty much all our park and loo funds for a lot. Uh, that is going to have to be remediated. We're talking about a total cost that's not even um, 
not even been defined yet, how we're going to pay for that park when we, have, when we get around to building it. And if it's going to be two and a half years later, I think there's going to be a lot of frustration from the neighborhood. And uh, it's not a situation that I like to be in where I have to try to explain to, to the voters why uh, it takes this long to get things done. So, um, like I said, I know that there are reasons why these things take so long, but this really does seem to be um, way too long. And I, I, I have to wonder if, uh, if we had let PG&E sell these lots, would there be houses there now? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? If not, I'll move to approve. Motion second to approve uh, uh, item F. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Proposed? 